Hi, I'm Kerry Dismore. And I'm Steve Oakley. Right off the bat, color correction, color grading. What's the difference? Well, there actually is a difference. Color correction, generally speaking, is when you want to make technical corrections to an image to get good contrast, good saturation, maybe some basic camera matching. But it's really not going too crazy with the image. You know, a lot of people use those terms interchangeably. Right. Well, you could call it technical grading. Yeah. Technically. But I think for purposes of this discussion, color correction will be just that. Neutralizing a shot, evening out differences right. between cameras, fixing technical issues, getting the contrast where it needs to be, basically getting a shot neutral. Now, color grading, that's where the art comes in. Right. That's where you're trying to create kind of a mood or a feeling or make something warm and fuzzy or cold and gritty or whatever by deliberately affecting the color in a way that's maybe not quite so neutral. And then, of course, we've got that in-between area where you're doing a sort of technical, sort of artistic grade. For example, you've got an interior with a blue window, and you say, I, I don't like the blue. Let's make that color warm again so that it matches the rest of the shot. So being able so, to selectively just grade right. that portion of the frame. It's artistic, but it's also technical. Yeah. And also, you know, if you're shooting in a raw format, trying to recover your highlights to get more dynamic range in the picture. That's huge. That's technical, That's why I love but... grading raw. You know, it's also an artistic thing because we've seen certain movies like shot on red that are very contrasting in the way they look, yet we know that camera has incredible latitude. Oh yeah, it's recording raw. So, yeah. There's a lot of little bit of mix in here, but that by and large is artistic color grading where you're setting the look. So tools. I mean, my nonlinear editor has lots of color correction and color grading tools within it. And then I can move up to third-party plugins like Colorista or Magic Bullet Looks that give me more powerful capabilities. And Resolve is a dedicated color grading application. Now, where and why and when would I want to use these different approaches? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, it has to do with workflow. It has to do with speed. It has to do with really the grand context of the work you're doing. I use Colorist and Magic Bullet looks all the time. I love them. In the nonlinear editor, when I got a couple shots that I just want to go in there and mess with those shots, and that's it. I'm really not doing a 10 minute show with 300 shots in it. Right. Or if you're buried in a huge comp in After Effects and you've got stuff keyed out on different layers and you want to go in and affect just one layer at a time or something, and it's just easier to just have a plug-in to do it there. Right. They're great for that. Yeah. But when you really want to do grading on an entire show and you need to be fast about it, you can't just constantly be jumping in and out of these interfaces. They're nice. Don't get me wrong. They are. It's time. It's click. Wait. Ba -da -da -da. Click. Get out. And it's all those pauses that are going on. When you're in a color grading app, all you've got are the tools that are important for doing the job. Yeah. They're either directly in front of you or they're about one click away. Right. There's something about that focus that it provides just on creating that, that grade or that look or finishing that program. There's a lot to be said about the speed and efficiency, um, especially because I can do a grade, I can hit play, I'm not rendering and I can see it in the context of the other shots that I'm working with. Absolutely. But I suppose with a dedicated color grading app like Resolve, I'd probably want to get my edit near finished or what we call picture lock before I take it over to Resolve. Right. Picture lock means you're not messing around with the picture anymore. You're, you're done. Um, what Resolve does support, though, is that it realizes that we live in this real world where what happens? The producer comes running and says, I know you're half done with the show, but can we trim this edit three frames? Can we swap whole scenes around? Can we? And you know what you say to them? No problem. We're going to add a couple hours onto the bill. That's good. And we'll flip your scenes around because Resolve actually has basically a nonlinear editor within the interface. So you can go in, you can trim shots, slip and slide shots. You can lift things around, move them, enable, disable clips. There's a lot there. Yeah, but there one are but. some limitations. There's one but. Resolve doesn't edit audio. So if you start doing things in Resolve that put things out of sync, you're going to have to put them back in sync, or your audio guy is going to be really upset that he's got to go fix it. 
Well, it sounds like Resolve has a fair amount of flexibility for handling some of those situations that come up. In real life? Yeah, real life production <laughs> for real life clients. Hey, can I have a 13% funnier? <laughs> no, that's editorial. <laughs> that's, hey, send it back to edit. <laughs> so I think what we should do is leave it there and take the next segment and make it all about looking at the Resolve workflow. Yeah, we'll get into more specific details there. Join us in our next episode where we get into an overview of the Resolve workflow. We'll explore a number of different ways to get projects in and out of Resolve, some great features and gotchas, and express an opinion or two along the way. We'd like to thank Blackmagic Design, makers of DaVinci Resolve, for underwriting some of the costs of this episode. Check out the full range of Blackmagic Design products at their website, blackmagic-design.com. Transparency is important to us. While we have accepted underwriting support, our underwriters do not have any editorial control. We are expressing our own opinions and points of view. We want you, the viewers, to factor this as you view this content.